Hi folks, this is Alan and I'm back with another movie review for you. And today I'm going to be reviewing a very special sci-fi film from 1964. Uh, let me just say briefly that uh, there is a current film out right now in movie theaters called The Martian, starring Matt Damon as a U.S. astronaut stranded on the planet Mars. And uh, I haven't seen the movie yet. I'm thinking about seeing it. I know it's been getting really, really good reviews, and all my friends are saying, oh, you gotta go see it, you gotta go see it, you gotta go see The Martian, you gotta go see The Martian. Um, I might do that, we'll see. Um, the fact is, The Martian... Uh, reminded me of a wonderful film from 1964, uh, yeah, 51 years ago at the time I'm making this video, 51 years ago, uh, that also featured a U.S. astronaut stranded on the planet Mars. Yes, 51 years before Matt Damon uh, was stranded on the planet Mars, uh, an actor named Paul Mantee played an astronaut named uh, Colonel Kit Draper, and he was stranded on the planet Mars in a wonderful film, absolutely wonderful sci-fi film from 1964 called Robinson Crusoe on Mars, uh, directed by Byron Haskin. This is a wonderful movie, and I'd, I'd be pretty shocked if The Martian was not partially inspired by uh, Robinson Crusoe on Mars. And yes, I do know The Martian was originally a novel, so I'm sure the author of uh, the original novel, The Martian, must have been partially inspired by uh, Robinson Crusoe on Mars in some way, I would think. Because anyway, as you can tell by the title of the film, Robinson Crusoe on Mars is a sci-fi retelling of the classic... Uh, tale Robinson Crusoe, uh, written by, uh, Daniel Defoe. Thank you. <laughs> Daniel Defoe. Um, and anyway, yeah, it's a sci-fi retelling of Robinson Crusoe. That's, that's what it is. It makes no apologies for that. That's what the movie is. Um, but it does it wonderfully. Um, don't be thrown off by the title Robinson Crusoe on Mars. This is a wonderful sci-fi film that I have loved ever since I was a child. Uh, my local TV stations would run Robinson Crusoe on Mars, you know, pretty, pretty frequently. I mean, maybe not super frequently, but at least once or twice a year, Robinson Crusoe on Mars would pop up on the local TV stations. And it took forever for this wonderful film to finally make it onto DVD, but man, the day this thing came out on, on DVD, this wonderful film came out on DVD, yeah, bought it the first day it was out. It, I mean, I had to have this in the DVD files. Anyway, um, the, the plot of the film is pretty simple. Uh, there are two U.S. astronauts. Uh, there's um, uh, Commander Kit Draper, played by Paul Mantee, and then there's also uh, Colonel, I'm looking him up, Colonel Dan McCready, played by Adam West. Yes, Adam West of Batman fame. And they are on a mission to Mars, and they're orbiting the planet Mars. And along with these two astronauts is their wonderful little uh, pet monkey, or test monkey, I guess. But, you know, she's basically a, their pet monkey for, for the journey, named uh, Mona. Mona the monkey. And uh, anyway... Uh, the uh, astronauts, along with their pet monkey, are uh, circling the planet Mars when all of a sudden a meteor comes directly towards their spacecraft. Uh, the two astronauts have to do emergency procedures to avoid uh, hitting the meteor or avoid the meteor hitting them, uh, and they have to abandon ship. So they abandon their spacecrafts in separate capsules. Uh, first, Draper lands. And um, from this point on, uh, the movie is a story of, uh, of uh, Commander Draper's survival. Um, he later, you know, he later does a trek over to, uh, to the capsule where his friend uh, McCready has landed. Sadly, McCready was killed in the landing. I guess his, his craft crash landed and, and McCready was killed. But Mona the monkey survived, thank goodness. So, so uh, Draper, you know, he collects Mona the monkey. And from this point on, the movie, yeah, the movie is a story of Draper's survival. You know, his oxygen is running out. He has to find water. He has to find food. I mean, he has limited f food and water rations. Those are going to run out. His oxygen is going to run out. Just how is he going to survive? And that's basically the telling of the story. Um, we see him survive. We see him come up with a way to, to make more oxygen for himself. We see him find another water supply, another food supply. Um, however, loneliness and isolation definitely set in because, hey, he thinks, he thinks gee, I, I mean, my only companion is, is, is Mona the monkey and, uh, and, you know, she's great, but I don't have anybody to talk to and I'm going crazy. But later on in the film, 
he meets an alien. That's right, uh, Draper, he meets an alien, a humanoid alien who he, uh, in honor of Defoe's classic story, Robinson Crusoe, Draper names the alien Friday. And, uh, and Friday turns out to be an escaped slave from another alien race, but they become friends and uh, they both fight for survival together, along with Mona the monkey. And uh, that's basically what you've got. It's, it's just exactly what the title of the film says. It's Robinson Crusoe on Mars. And this is a wonderful film. As I say, I have, I have always loved Robinson Crusoe on Mars uh, since I first saw it on my local TV stations as a child. It is so wonderfully done. And, you know, the script is really, really great for this film. Um, and I also think it, it, uh, the film is wonderfully acted by the cast, even though it's basically just three men and a monkey. <laughs> That's it. I mean, Paul Mantee as, as the main uh, character, Commander Draper. Uh, Adam West, although his role is basically a cameo, really, as, uh, as Colonel McCready. And then finally, you have Victor London as the alien Friday. Uh, and then, of course, you've got uh, Mona the Monkey. It, it turns out that Mona the Monkey was actually a male woolly monkey named Barney. And according to Wikipedia, Barney, being a male uh, woolly monkey, he had to wear a fur-covered diaper <laughs> in order to pass himself off in the film as a female uh, woolly monkey. So that's, that's basically your cast for the film in Robinson Crusoe on Mars. Three men and a monkey. But these three men and the monkey make the film work. And director Byron Haskin, his marvelous direction of this film, he makes the film work. Um, so, for, for the cast, yeah, Paul Mantee, you know, he, he did quite a few films back in the day, like in the 50s and 60s, although I think it's safe to say Robinson Crusoe on Mars is, is the film that, that, uh, Mantee will always be best known for, um, and I think he, he gives a terrific performance in this film. You may not know his name, but Paul Mantee was a marvelously talented actor, and, you know, he has to carry the bulk of the film by himself. I mean, I mean, for the first, for the very first chunk of the film, the very first little snippet of the film, Adam West is with him, but then we lose Adam West, and then for the bulk of the movie, it's just Paul Mantee and, and Mona the Monkey, uh, until like about an hour or so into the film when, when, uh, when uh, Mantee's character, Commander Draper, finally meets Friday. Um, but yeah, for the bulk of the film, Paul Mantee has to carry the film pretty much by himself with only a monkey for company, and Paul Mantee, he does it. He really, really does it. I mean, it's a, it's a great performance. He, uh, he's got, you know, he has command. He has a very commanding presence. He's also a very, very likable guy. You care about him. You root for his survival. And obviously, I mean, they really, really needed to find the right actor to pull this off since he was going to be carrying the bulk of the film pretty much on his own, um, a large chunk of the film anyway. And Paul Manti, wonderful performance as, as Commander Draper. Uh, he's great. Um, Victor London as Friday, he's great too. I mean, he doesn't speak all that much, but later on in the film, you know, uh, uh, Draper teaches Friday how to speak English, and, and so then, you know, Friday becomes more, more vocal. But I mean, he's, he's a great, he's in a great performance too, Victor London. I mean, I mean, he's tall, but he's obviously very scared and nervous and, and very unsure of this, this new guy that he's, he's come in contact with. Is he my friend? Is he my foe? You know, what's going on? But as, as time goes on, you know, they, they learn to trust each other, and of course, they become friends. And I just think Victor London is very, very charming. I think in the end, he's very, very charming as, as the alien companion for Commander Draper, Friday. And I do think that the two men have wonderful chemistry with each other. They really do make a wonderful pair. You know, once, once we get into the second half of the film, and it's the two of them together uh, fighting for survival. So I really like Victor London a lot as, uh, as Friday. He's, he's a great companion for Paul Mantee's uh, Commander Draper. Uh, Adam West, like I said, his, his part in the film as uh, Colonel McCready uh, is pretty much a, just a cameo role. He's only in the very first part of the film, and then we see him in, in one scene later on in the film, and that's pretty much all Adam West has. Uh, but, you know, Adam West, he, he makes the most of it, and it's nice to see him in this movie. And, um, like I said, it's, it's, it's not much more than a cameo role, but, as I say, Adam West, he, he makes the most of it, and he is very good. 
uh, as uh, Colonel McCready, you know, the, the screen time that he does have in the film. And then finally, you have the wonderful, adorable Mona the monkey, who's actually Barney, <laughs> the, 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 the woolly monkey. Um, and what can I say? Barney, in the role of Mona, the woolly monkey, I mean, he's, or she's, adorable. She's absolutely adorable. She's, uh, well, okay, it's, it's really a male woolly monkey, okay? So we're going to say Barney. In the role of Mona, Barney the woolly monkey, I mean, he, he's absolutely adorable. He's like the most adorable woolly monkey you've ever seen in your life. And uh, <laughs> every single time, you know, he's on screen, especially when there's a close-up of, of him, you just can't help but go, aww. <laughs> You know, he's so cute. He's such an adorable little woolly monkey. It's like, oh, I want a woolly monkey. I want a woolly monkey just like Mona. Um, so yes, Barney the woolly monkey in the role of Mona the woolly monkey. And as I said, yeah, apparently Barney had to wear uh, a fur-covered diaper to carry up his male, to, ca to cover his male genitalia. But yes, Barney the woolly monkey, absolutely adorable as Mona the woolly monkey. So yeah, Barney, I'm... I, it's probably safe to say Barney's no longer with us, but anyway, Barney was indeed a most adorable monkey, and like I said, you will definitely fall in love with Barney the Wooly Monkey in the role of Mona the Wooly Monkey uh, in, in this film. Yeah, he's, he's a wonderful uh, Wooly Monkey. I also have to give major props to the director of this film, Byron Haskin. I mean, to direct a movie called Robinson Crusoe on Mars, I mean, this film could have been a disaster in the wrong director's hands. But Byron Haskin, he took this material seriously, he directed it seriously enough, although he still sprinkles the film with, with occasional bits of humor. And he did it beautifully. His direction of this film is wonderful. I also have to give credit to the screenwriters, um, John C. Higgins, and this is an interesting name, Ib Melchior. How's that for a name? Ib Melchior, <laughs> one of the co-writers of the screenplay, along with uh, John C. Higgins. And again, their screenplay for this film, wonderful. Uh, it's intelligent. Uh, it's clever, and it's wonderful storytelling. It just really, really is. Again, they, the way this film was written could have been a disaster. But again, the screenwriters, as well as the director, they took this material seriously. And, uh, and they, they did beautifully with it. They did absolutely beautifully with this film. Um, I also have to give major credit to uh, the, the visual effects artists. Um, let's see. Well, actually, let me, let me start off by saying uh, the cinematography on this film was done by Winton C. Hotch, or Hawk. I'll pronounce it Hotch. Uh, Winton C. Hotch. Uh, the cinematography on this film was wonderful. The film was actually shot in Death Valley. And, I mean, just the panoramic shots that you see all throughout Robinson Crusoe on Mars is just amazing stuff. Also, the, the, the visual effects team on, on this movie did a wonderful job as well. Um, they use a lot of matte paintings. Uh, so, I mean, to, to see panoramic matte paintings of, of the, the Mars vistas and, and just the whole Mars atmosphere as, uh, as uh, Draper and, and sometimes with Friday and Mona are walking around, you know, the, the landscapes of Mars. It's just beautiful stuff. I mean, I would love to see this film on the big screen. I mean, I think, I think Robinson Crusoe on Mars would be an amazing film to see on the big screen. But at the very least, get your hands on the DVD version because the film is definitely in widescreen on the DVD and just the panoramic shots are just amazing in, in this film. So beautiful, beautiful photography on this film uh, shot in, in Death Valley. And the visual effects for its time, again, this was 1964, the visual effects on the film are, are, are wonderful. Um, they use effects with, with fire. There's, there's visual effects when we see the, uh, the spaceships that uh, Friday... Uh, was a slave on, even though they're basically duplicate spaceships from from the sci-fi film War of the Worlds. <laughs> but I actually like how they how they quickly zip in the sky, you know, and they make that, and they zip around in the sky really fast. Uh, that's pretty cool. Um, the sets, the, the the set designs um, on on this film are, are wonderful too. Um, I also think the music on this film is great too, by uh, Van Cleves. I think is is the composer. Yeah, or Van Cleve. Van Cleve uh, did the the music for this film, and I just love the uh, the or, or the uh, orchestrations on this film. I love that, uh, especially that bit that that goes something like that 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 haunting piece of music that goes. <laughs> Yeah, 
yeah, very, very haunting, very, very beautiful music, and it, it definitely sticks with you. So great music score by, by Van Cleave. Um, I can't say that Robinson Crusoe on Mars is a perfect film. Um, there's some scientific elements of it that, that we know now are not quite right. I mean, obviously there's no air, not even minimal kind of air on Mars. And I mean, the way it's portrayed here in Robinson Crusoe on Mars is that, no, it's not the most breathable air, and you can only breathe it for a matter of minutes, really. But I think as far as we know, there, there's no air on, on Mars whatsoever. Uh, as we see uh, uh, Draper in, in this film, you know, he can breathe the Mars air for a few minutes before he has to take a boost of air from his own, you know, oxygen tank. And later on, as the film goes on, we see how he adapts and how he, he is, in fact, in the end, able to breathe uh, the, the Martian air, although he has to keep his oxygen tank with him at all times. But uh, So that's not, that's not quite right. Um, also, I don't think there's any fire on the planet Mars. We see lots of flames coming out from, from the Mars surface, you know, from, 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 the, from the Martian sand. We see, like, flames coming out from the Martian sand. I don't think that's true. Um, and again, how, how Draper finds water, how he finds a particular uh, kind of Martian food. Um, again, not quite realistic, but you know what? I'm going to give the movie a pass anyway, because look, this is a sci-fi film. It's not... It's not reality. It is a work of fiction. It's a sci-fi retelling of Robinson Crusoe, and uh, this guy has to make it to the end, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Just like Robinson Crusoe. He has to survive. He has to make it to the end of the movie and live to tell the tale. So, you know, this, this movie, it is what it is. It is indeed a sci-fi retelling of Robinson Crusoe. That's what it is. It says so right there in the movie title, and I think it works wonderfully. This is a wonderfully entertaining sci-fi film. Um, it was very, very overlooked at the time it was released in 1964, although it was actually, uh, it, it did get some, some critical acclaim at the time, but the box office on it wasn't very good. Maybe audiences in 1964 just didn't know what to make of it at the time, but I am indeed very, very pleased, very, very happy to see that uh, Robinson Crusoe on Mars has definitely become a cult film it, uh, with the passing of years that uh, more people have discovered it, and especially now that it's on DVD. Hooray! That, uh, that people do recognize it now as the sci-fi classic that it is. Um, it could have been a disaster. It could have been a total failure, but the fact is everybody working on Robinson Crusoe on Mars took the material seriously, and they created a wonderfully entertaining sci-fi film that the whole family can enjoy. And um, it works a treat. And like I said, everybody's going ape about uh, Matt Damon in The Martian. Well, 51 years before Matt Damon got stuck on Mars, Paul Mantee got stuck on Mars in 1964 with Robinson Crusoe on Mars. I may go see The Martian. I don't know. I'm still debating. But I'm just, I just want you folks to know that 51 years before The Martian was Robinson Crusoe on Mars. This is a wonderful, absolutely wonderful sci-fi film. Uh, that works from the first frame to the last, even though there may be some scientific elements of it that that don't quite, you know, that don't quite hold water to this day. But like I said, it's a it's a sci-fi film, okay? It's fictional. Just go with it. <laughs> Just go with it. It tells its story wonderfully. It's wonderfully acted, wonderfully directed, wonderfully written, wonderfully shot. Great visual effects and you know panoramic scenes and you know matte paintings and and uh, great music. And uh, it's, it's a wonderful package film from start to finish. I mean, it really, really holds up. It's not a perfect film, but it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. I think all things considered, this is a wonderfully entertaining sci-fi film. And um, I just love it. I've loved Robinson Crusoe on Mars ever since I was a kid. I'm very happy to have it on DVD. And maybe, maybe, thanks to the release of The Martian, maybe, just maybe, more people will want to check out Robinson Crusoe on Mars. I, I sure hope so, because I've got a lot of great love for this film. And uh, one more thing I want to say before I conclude this review video. I was very sad to read that both Paul Mantee, who plays Commander Draper, and Victor London, who plays Friday, they both passed away in 2013, and they only died like, like five months apart from each other. Uh, first Victor London, and then five months later Paul Mantee. So sadly... 
Sadly, Paul Mantee and Victor London are no longer with us. Commander Draper and Friday, they are no longer with us. They passed away in the same year, 2013. But I just want to raise a toast. I do have a drink nearby. I want to raise a toast. <laughs> it looks like a soda can, but really it's, it's, a, it's a cooler can. It's a thermos. That's, that's the word. Anyway, a toast. A toast to Paul Mantee and Victor London, also known as Commander Draper and Friday from Robinson Crusoe on Mars. Wonderful job, you guys, on this film. Love you. Miss you both. And thank you for making this wonderful film and performing in it so wonderfully. God bless you, Paul Mantee and Victor London. Yes, Commander Draper and Friday. God bless you both. <sighs> wonderful actors, both of them. Paul Mantee and Victor London. And also props to Adam West and props to Barney the Wooly Monkey <laughs> and director Byron Haskin and everybody who worked on this wonderful film, Robinson Crusoe on Mars, one of my all-time favorite sci-fi films. If you like The Martian with Matt Damon, definitely check out Robinson Crusoe on Mars. Oh yeah. And that's my review of Robinson Crusoe on Mars. And uh, that's it for this review video. This is Alan. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back next time with another movie review. And I'll see you then.